I'm going to discuss energy in waves. Uh, we'll look at the energy in a stretched string um, and generalize that to um, all waves, and then I'll talk about what happens at a boundary between two different media. Um, so the, the kinetic energy, um, which of course, as with all of these quantities, is per unit length, it is fairly simple to understand. Um, here we have a half, we have the mass per unit length, and we have d psi by dt, all squared. This is, of course, for a transverse wave. Um, in this situation, psi is the transverse displacement, mu is the mass per unit length on the stretched string, um, and so the kinetic energy per unit length is simply found in the normal way um, for a system. The potential energy, um, let's do that over here on the right, is effectively the work done um, in stretching the string multiplied by the distance moved. Um, this is a, a standard form for a potential energy. Um, now, the work done is going to be um, just work against the tension. So the work done is just T, the tension. Um, and we will show that the distance moved is um, per unit length, remember, is a half d psi by dx, all squared. Um, you can see that quite simply if you just consider a small segment of string. Um, so this is going to be taking a length delta x. And we're going to say that the length of the string is delta L. Um, and then this vertical distance here is d psi by dx delta x. Um, you can just look at that from simple trigonometry or the, to first order by the definition of a differential. Um, and the distance moved is going to be per unit length is minus delta is delta L minus delta x divided by delta x. Um, and we can write just from trigonometry that delta L squared is equal to delta x squared um, plus d psi by dx all squared delta x squared, um, which implies that delta L is equal to delta x multiplying the square root of 1 plus d psi by dx squared to the half. Um, and using the binomial theorem, that's approximately equal to um, delta x into 1 plus a half d psi by dx squared. Um, and then if you substitute that in to this form up here, delta l minus delta x over delta x, you recover um, the, the distance moved being a half d psi by dx squared. So the total energy density, um, the total energy per unit length, um, which we might write as w, is equal to a half mu d psi by dt all squared plus a half t the tension d psi by dx all squared. Um, and if we substitute in for mu and t in terms of the, um, the impedance and the speed on the wave, let me just clear that up, oh, bother, that's all gone wrong, um, nah, ignore that please, is equal to um, a half impedance divided by speed into um, d psi by dt all squared plus c squared d psi by dx all squared. Um, and dimensionally this whole thing makes sense because Z0 over C is a mass-like term, a mass per unit length term. Um, d psi by dt is a velocity, so you get a velocity squared, um, and d psi by dx is dimensionless, so C squared times that is also a velocity. Um, the power along the power transmitted along the string um, is going to be Again, it's going to be related to the work done um, divided by the time taken. Um, now, let's think about that. The work done is minus t d psi by dx. Um, that's the vertical component of the tension, given the current position of the string. Um, and that's going to be multiplied by delta psi, because that's the, the distance moved vertically, um, the time taken is delta t. Um, and so in the limit that t ten, delta t tends to zero, we end up with minus t d psi by dx d psi by dt. 
um, which is the power and for traveling waves if you want to so we can use um, the traveling wave equation let me put this down here inside some brackets so for traveling waves we have that d psi by dt uh, minus or plus c d psi by dx is equal to zero that's for psi of x plus or minus ct um, and we can use that relationship to find that e is equal to uh, z naught over c d psi by dt all squared or if you prefer uh, z naught c d psi by dx all squared and p is equal to minus or plus c times e um, which is equal to minus or plus z naught d psi by dt all squared that makes sense um, so a wave moving in the negative x direction that is a psi of x plus ct has a power which is negative in other words the power is traveling in the negative x direction now let's think about what happens at a boundary um, between two strings and this is just a little bit more subtle um, we have to think very carefully about what's going on so on we'll put the boundary um, at x equals naught um, and we'll have z1 on the left uh, ie x less than zero and um, z2 on the right ie x greater than zero um, and then we can write the solution we write that psi l psi on the left ie for x less than zero is a cos of omega t minus k1x um, plus r a cos of omega t plus k1x um, and psi on the right is a t cos of omega t minus k2x um, and remember that r is equal to z1 minus z2 divided by z1 plus z2 and t is equal to 1 plus r uh, we see here one of many examples where the the same letter is used for different things here t is representing the transmission coefficient up above we had it as the tension in order to calculate the power transmission at the boundary which is really what matters it's not it's a question of what whether the power transmission is um, conserved across the boundary then we need to work out a number of different forms we need to work out d psi left by dx um, we need to work out and that's given by let's say k1 a um, into sine of omega t minus k1x minus r sine of omega t plus k1x um, let's change this into a square bracket here on the left we need a deep psi left by dt um, that one's easier that's just given by minus omega a into again sine omega t minus k1x plus r sine omega t plus k1x um, and we need to work out d psi right by dx which is just k2 t a sine omega t minus k2x um, and finally d psi right by dt um, is given by minus omega t a sine of omega t minus k 2 x we need um, the power to be conserved in other words the power transmission from left and right should be the same at x equals zero now if you calculate that you can calculate the power on the left pl um, as <coughs> equal to excuse me z1 c1 a squared k1 omega um, 1 minus r 1 plus r sine squared omega t and the power on the right is equal to z2 c2 
a squared um, k2 omega into 1 plus r all squared that's effectively t um, sine squared omega t um, when you equate those two remember of course that c, that, that um, c times k is equal to omega in both cases um, and therefore when we equate them so if we want pl to equal pr this implies um, that when you cancel the factors z1 into 1 minus r must equal z2 into 1 plus r um, and this is fulfilled so if you just expand out those brackets um, this is correct so what we've done is we have started from the condition um, on the boundary of the wave which I derived in a previous screencast um, we've taken the forms of the equations that we use for those um, and we've shown that at the boundary the total power crossing the boundary is the same on the left and the right which is physically required for the system um, so overall we've looked at how energy transmission works in waves how it moves um, and how the energy changes um, you can look at things like the balance between the kinetic energy and the potential energy and notice that for a traveling wave the kinetic energy and the potential energy are both at a maximum in the same place. Uh, I hope that that helps. Um, in particular, I hope that the con conservation of power across the boundary and th between two strings helps. Um, it might be worth just going through that, drawing yourself a diagram, checking that you understand. <laughs>